Anyway, just now, they fucking lifted it up. The wind blew it so fucking hard, it smashed into the roof of that house. Good morning everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Luke, thanks for watching. <coughs> um, today's Friday and I am in the yard just doing all my daily checks, getting everything turned on, slash charged up. My, uh, I got a new tablet, don't know if I've mentioned yet, um, so I just need to charge that up. So that's one thing that I'm doing now. Um, I also still need to do my daily checks. Well, I've done the daily checks, just need to fill it in. Um, my dash cam needs to be turned on. Let's turn that on now. That's not the one that you see, the one that uh, records all the time. Right, so let's do the daily check paperwork. Du -du 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 -du. Yeah, so thank you very much everyone for uh, tuning in today. Um, we should have three jobs to do today. Let me just have a look. Oh, this needs charging as well. Everything needs to be charged. Yeah, charging, charging. Right, yeah, today we're supposed to be going to a place called Groove, or Grove, however you pronounce it. Then we've got to go Morton on the Marsh, and then we've got a, an Izzy to Reading. Which uh, we'd never got around to doing yesterday. Get my phone out, my pocket. There we go. Right, so it's the 24th today, 24th of February. Du -du -du. Put the reg in. My name is Luke. Odometer 293841. And I did not have any defects this morning. So, we're getting there, nearly done. Daily check's done. Um, things are starting to charge up. Everything seems to be, well, they're still on 0%, but yeah, everything seems to be on its way to working. Let's put that up there for now. <coughs> My um, dash at the moment is quite messy, there's loads of cables all over the place. <laughs> God, and even, I even need to charge you up. You've only got two batteries, for fuck's sake. Got to charge everything up, man. Right. <laughs> so, I'll charge some of this shit up, and then I'll be charging the GoPro up. I do have a backup, obviously. Ooh. That one there. How much has this got? Well, that's got a full battery, so... I'll just use that if need be. <laughs> Right, uh, so we need to go across the road now get, to get loaded. We're supposed to be there at quarter past eight. It's a very late start today. It's just gone eight o'clock now. So, um, in a second, I'll go over there. My car's been in for ten minutes. Um, and then uh, we get loaded. We're supposed to be going to... Where did I say? Oh. No. We're supposed to be going to Groove. G-R-O-V-E. Groove. We're fine now, aren't we? Hello everybody, so we're well on our way. We're, um, we're nearly here. Just navigate these roundabouts. At the moment we're in a town called Wantage, or a village, not really sure what it is. Uh, we've been to Wantage loads of times, I think actually we're going to pass a school that we uh, did a playground for not too long ago. Uh, but we're actually going to a place called Groove, or Grove, um, and we've got to go to Station Road, which I think is the road linking that village to this village, or town, whatever this is. <clears throat> so, that's where we're going now. Just very bumpy roads, roundabouts. Don't want to go over them too fast. Might damage the truck otherwise. Uh, 
I need my sunglasses because it's bright out, but if I've got my sunglasses on, I can't see the sat nav very well. <laughs> I've already made one wrong turn, I've had to turn around. Which is a bit silly, really, because it was on the A420. That was the score. So we time like that. Um, I may have been in that, I think I have been in that house and estate as well. Yeah, I'm sure I have. First time I ever saw that up ahead, I absolutely shit myself. I genuinely thought there was a fucking aeroplane crashing. Well, the first time I ever saw that. I'm sure you can see it on the dash cam. But yeah, <laughs> I genuinely shit myself. I thought an aeroplane was crashing. Let me know if you guys thought the same when you saw it. Go round the roundabout. Even though Groove is down there. Satnav's taking me this way. Ah, oh, right, we're nearly there. Um, so we've got 15 tonne of tarmac on board. Um, so we're not fully loaded. On the second load, one load of tarmac uh, has already been sent. Um, and 20, yeah, that's 20 tonne has already been sent, so it'll be another eight wheeler. Could be Reg, could be uh, Pete. They're the two guys that work for the same company, pretty much. Or out of the same quarry. But it could be someone from a different site. But we'll find out soon. We're only a mile away, just around the corner. Well, the sat nav has taken us just around the corner. Groove Meadows. I don't know if it's a housing uh, project or whether it's the main road. It just says Station Road. I just saw an AA sign saying there's a house and place down here. So what we'll be looking for in a second is anything to give us an indication that we're in the right place. Be it a house in estates on the left or right, or road close signs, or road works, anything like that. That is what we're now on the lookout for. And this is a main road. So, I can't see us doing this road unless they've got half shut off with traffic lights. So we're looking for temporary traffic lights, potentially. Yeah, that's it, you change, you change green. There's flashing lights down there. Is it for me though? Gibbs, of course, they are in yellow vehicles. So we're looking for like a yellow van or yellow pavers, anything like that. That's just a tractor down there. Um, I did look at the map and there's a roundabout at the end of the road as well. So I'll go all the way to the roundabout and turn around if I can't see it. Or if I miss the turn in or whatever. But literally around this corner is where it should be. But what I do is I sort of scout ahead in the fields and things and just see if I can see any flashing lights. See if I can see any new bills being erected, any cranes, anything like that. Just to give me a bit of an indication that I'm in the right area. Can I see anything around here? Nothing around here yet. Ah, yeah, I see road work, see cranes, see all sorts. And it's pretty much where the postcode has taken me, so it could be where I need to go. And I see a tar, uh, a lorry. <laughs> Nearly said it again, a company I work for. Now, how do I get in? You are right? Yeah. What have you got? 15 tonne. Six mil. Six mil. 15 tonne of 6 mil. Yeah. Keep going on, and 
What, through there? Go back down there, yeah. Take the right, round it back down there. You're going straight on, yeah. Take the next right, So I don't know if you heard that. I suppose I'm I'm sort of to blame. I come in, he said, what have I got? I said, 15 ton, which is what I've got. Assuming he knew I got tarmac, and he goes, of what? Again, assuming he knew tarmac, I said six mil, because that's what we got, we got six mil tarmac. He's giving me all these fucking instructions to go round the fucking corners and go round there and all round there, and I couldn't understand what he was saying. Go right, go left, then straight on, then go right. Go down a country lane, he was going. I was like, well, what for? So I got out of the cab, I was like, why do I need to go down there? I'm here. He goes, and I pointed to the other lawyer. I said, well, why is he here then? Because well, he's got tarmac. I was like, well, so have I. <laughs> so, <laughs> miscommunication there. Never mind. So I'm just going to stop here. Looks like we've got to do this bit as well in a sec. I'm sure I'm going to have to move out of the way in a moment. But, um, yeah, well, at least we're here. Um, see, this is called Bowway Homes. You can see on the left, potentially, maybe, it says Bowway Grove Meadows. My paperwork don't say anything about it being a housing estate. It don't say anything about being Bowway. It doesn't say anything about the name of the site, obviously, Grove Meadows. It just says The Grove. But, fortunately, the postcode brought me straight here. But we do have it quite often where the postcode takes you down the fucking end of the road. And you might have two or three or fucking how many building sites and you don't know which one you need to be in but um yeah anyway where are we are now so that's what matters all that matters right so um i'll see you in a bit i don't know if you are you probably can't see now but behind the paver there's like a triangle thing that that crane is lifting up don't know if you can quite see anyway just now they fucking lifted it up the wind blew it so fucking hard it fucking smashed into the roof of that house and fucking, I don't know if you can see, but it broke the roof. There's a bit of wood broken on the roof, there is. I was walking down there and I was like, fuck, that wind's blowing that fucking thing like shit. It's too windy to lift that up, lads. Jesus. Nowhere near as bad as it was yesterday, like, but... Fucking hell, someone's head could have got taken off of that. Crane driver couldn't do anything, but lift it up even higher. Couldn't put it down, because it's blowing like shit. If the wind really wanted to, that could have blowed it towards my lorry. Fuck. <laughs> right, so we just did a little bit. But now um, I've got to come off and turn around and go back where I just was. If I can get out. I need to do a U-turn.
and then go back in here. Like so. Apparently they got a because obviously it's uh, all pedestrianised, so um, pedestrians can walk past. But there's no pedestrian access from down there, so I think they've got to lay all the stuff so the pedestrians can get through. So that could be here. A little bit longer. So we're still here on this same site. We've moved to a different location. We lit like before, I was just behind. Just moved to a different location and facing a different way. We got it at 20 past nine, it's now nearly 20 past 11. Um, and I've just had a second tip. So I can't have too much more left on because I only come up here with 15 ton. So hopefully two more tips and I'll be done. But it's just taken ages. It's taken longer than what I thought it was gonna take. Um, I was supposed to be back in Cricklaid for 11 o'clock. The one with the close my tailgate supposed to be in quickly for 11 o'clock to um to do my morton in the marsh run 11 o'clock well if i left now i'm going to be there at quarter past 12. so i called up a good half an hour 45 minutes ago just letting them know that i won't be there called the planners up as well let them know that i'd be late not my fault I just just held up here on site um and then i'm supposed to be doing that IZ to reading but i've just received word that i could be doing an IZ to Cheltenham instead so before i go i need to make a phone call and just find out Just checking what they're doing. So yeah, still here, hopefully not much longer. So it's 20 past, no, quarter past 11. Quarter past 11 now, hopefully we'll be away within half an hour, 45 minutes by 12 o'clock. What time did I leave? Just gone 12 o'clock. So I managed to have a break as well. Uh, and we're just leaving. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing next because before I just started driving, I called um, Quick Laid Up, which is the plant I normally operate out of. No one's answering their phone. I then called Head Office Up, was on hold for five minutes, finally got through, uh, and then they put me on hold, and then they hung up. I'm gonna make it before he does. And then I try calling them back again, head office this is, and they never picked up. So I was on the phone, I was on hold, waiting for another five minutes and they never picked up. So I mean, I spent 15 minutes trying to make phone calls um, and I haven't really been given an answer on where I'm going. So I'm just gonna keep to my text, my schedule, uh, which is quarter to one, pick up at uh, Isley Manor and go to Reading. So if I leave now, I'm gonna get there for about half past one hopefully just before half past one, so I can get loaded before their break. Which is another thing. They tell me to get to Isley for quarter to, um, for, yeah, for quarter to two, but they're on break between half one and two o'clock, so they're telling me to get there when they're on break. Don't make sense. So, never mind. We're on our way to Isley Manor now, and then we're gonna go to Reddin. Funny thing is, if they call me, I can't answer, because uh, company procedures are that you're not allowed to use your phone while you're driving. Not even hands-free. So I won't be answering the phone while I'm on my way there. I'll have to stop and call them back if I can stop. So yeah, never mind. We're gonna go to, uh, to Izzy. So where I've just been, that was uh, called The Groove. I got there for about 20 past 11, I think the time was when I got there. And um, by the time I left, uh, by the time I finished there, it was like half past 11. But then I had a half an hour break. Pardon me. So now I hopefully I can drive for the rest of the day. I'm a little bit annoyed with my internet at the moment at home. I haven't, I don't, well, I think I've mentioned it briefly. I'm with Sky and we're supposed to get fibre optic, we're supposed to get 30 megabits a second, which is alright, it's not the fastest, I've had faster before, 
but it's, it's you know it's, it's a decent amount of a download upload i'm supposed to get like about eight but i tried uploading the vlog last night during the night while i'm sleeping woke up this morning and it was only on 15 percent. it's only a half an hour vlog it took all night to get up to 15 percent. so i cancelled it this morning and re-uploaded it and um my, my girlfriend messaged me about an hour ago or so and it was a 15% uh, again. So I seriously need to sort my internet out as with Sky. I'll be giving them a call later. I've already plugged all the cables in, make sure they're in correctly. I've even bought a new ADSL filter. Um, the laptop is slow on the internet, both wired and wireless. And I'm never more than sort of 20 feet away when I'm wireless. I've got a four bar signal. Just the internet download and upload speed is absolutely appalling at the moment and it's not what we were promised. So I'll be having words with them later. There's an aeroplane again. This is where I saw it from last time, coming from this way. I genuinely thought that motherfucking aeroplane was crashing into the road. Honestly. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me when I first saw it. Anyway. Um, I'm going to go to Wisey, get loaded, and then we're going to go to Reading. Right, we're just leaving now. Um, well, when I say we're just leaving, I mean, we've, we've been to Reading, and now we're just leaving Reading. Of course, because it's, um, it's the company I work for, or on behalf of, I'm not allowed to film in the site. So I couldn't film in there, unfortunately. But never mind, that's just done for the day. We're on our way back to the yard now. Should be there for about 20 to 4. Um, by the time I fill out a fuel, park up, do some paperwork, it's going to be about, it's going to be about 4 o'clock, so... <clears throat> nice nice early finish again. Seem to have a lot of them. <laughs> Not that I'm moaning. Um, so, when I finish work today, I actually need to go and get a, uh, a new house phone. Let him go first. Need to get a new house phone because the phone line is a bit dodgy at home. You, put, you dial out, you dial out, and it's like a hissing noise, which could be why there's a problem with the internet. So I want to go and buy a new house phone before I go and talk to Sky because I want to make sure it's not the house phone that's causing the problem. Like I said, I've already bought myself an ADSL filter as well, so I'm just trying to eliminate everything I can on my end so I can say, well, it's actually either a fault with the modem or you need to get an engineer out and fix the line. So, uh, that's what I'll be doing when I finish the day. Like I said, the lorry does need to have a wash as well. I mentioned it yesterday. I might come in over the weekend to do it. There's a cyclist coming, so I thought I'd better get out before he comes along. If I waited another five, six seconds, he's still not crossed that junction yet. I would have got stuck behind him. And we all know, one of my last videos, how fucking cyclists don't let you go past around this area. So yeah, that's uh, that's all the work that we've done today. We've only done two drops, done one this morning, and uh, I done one this afternoon. I, um, fucking hell, make it on your side. I, um, when I got loaded at Isley Manor, well, before I, before I drove to Isley Manor, I made a phone call and I asked, or tried to find out what it is I needed to, to do next. I, I told you about it before we left, or as we were leaving. Uh, and I was on the phone for about five minutes before I managed to get through, managed to get through to them, and I said, did you want me to go do my red and run? They said, yes. I said, okay, cool. Are you sure? Because I was supposed to go to Quicklade for 11 o'clock, but if I leave now, I'll be there at one o'clock. Because I was three hours late. They said, oh, okay, we'll give Quicklade a call quickly. Make sure there's no other work that needs to be done. Then the phone hung up. So I called them back. Um, I was on the phone again for another five minutes on hold. And they didn't answer, so I hung up. I was like, well, I'm not waiting any longer. Add that with the fact that I've been trying to phone Quicklade prior before that for about five, ten minutes. For about 15, 20 minutes, I was on the phone trying to find out what to do next. I didn't get anywhere, and because company procedure says you're not allowed to drive uh, or even have your key in your ignition while on the phone, even hands-free, I decided to just go to IZ and do the reading. A, because it's what my text has asked me to do, and B, because when I said to them, do you want me to go to Reading?" they said yes. 
So I went to Reading to get loaded. Now I got loaded, I got back on the Weybridge, and Lynn on the Weybridge said that the head office had called her, asked if I was there. She said yes, and they then asked her to get me to tip off what I had and go to Cheltenham instead. But apparently Lynn said, no, he's loaded now, so he's not tipping. But it's a fucking... I tried to find out what they want me to do. And they leave it to the last possible minute. They want me to go somewhere else, but they leave it too late. If they called me back while I was driving to IZ, which by the way takes an hour, they've got me on tracker, they know I'm on the move, they had an hour to call me, I could have stopped somewhere and give them a call back, but they never did. So I took it to go to Redden. So I'm not in trouble, I haven't done anything wrong, I've done what my text has asked me to do. But um, it just frustrates me that I do what's asked of me and then like, they change their mind and want you to do something else, but then it's too late because you're already loaded. Pain in the ass. And the company I work for, and I'm not, I'm not slagging the company off, I, I love working, I love this job, I love my jobs to bits. But they are getting quite nicky-picky now on, uh, on lateness and even earliness. Like, I was supposed to be loaded for this run to go to Reading. I was supposed to be loaded at quarter to two, I already said, which is a bit silly because it's when they're on their break. I got there at quarter past one, so I was half an hour earlier. But Lynn on the way bridge, bless her, she has to write down why I'm early. Why the fuck does it matter? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm early, that's a good thing. But no, she asked me why I'm early, so I said, well, I was held up on the first job, so I was late for the second job. The second job was given to someone else, so I've come to do my third job. I said, half an hour early ain't really bad though, is it? And then at Reading just now, matey boy's uh, he's in dying need for the sand. He said, we need more. I said, it was a good job I was early then. But, silly. Some of you know who I work for. And they do, they do have a reputation for being very hot on health and safety. And they are getting quite nitpicky. But I still love my job. I love it. And someone actually asked me the other day, do I still enjoy my job? And the answer is yes. If I didn't enjoy my job, I wouldn't be doing it. I've learned from experience. If I'm not happy with something, do something to get out of it. Worked in retail for fucking four years, five years. Worked my way up to become a team leader. Loved the job, but it just got to me. You either got moaned at by customers because you're trying to sell them add-ons, or moaned at by your managers because you didn't sell them the add-ons. <clears throat> and you always get the grumpy bastard that comes in saying it's your fault that they've been missold something. Or it's your fault that you don't know something about a product they want to know about. So I woke up one morning and I was like, no, fuck that, I'm not doing it anymore. I quit and I didn't give any notice, I just left. And I know it was a bit of a cuntish thing to do, but it's just how I felt. I felt like I better leave on my terms before I got fired. That's how I felt. So that's what I did, I left. Got a job working for a, uh, uh, for, for a logistic company. Uh, working in the warehouse during the nights. Again, it was an all right job. It was not the best job I've ever had. Got on with the people there. It was very cold. It was during the winter. It was during like uh, November, uh, October, November, December sort of time and January. Working seven o'clock at night to about seven o'clock in the morning. It was raining, it was snowing, it was gale force winds. It was a nightmare. What's this red car doing? Oh my God. Do you see that? That red car just swerved in and out of like three or four cars. It's gonna cause an accident. What a dick. Absolute fucking dickhead. He's behind that work van with the fluorescent colors. So red, I think it's a Vauxhall. I wanna get the number plate and send that to the police. That's fucking ridiculous. He just swerved in and out of fucking loads of cars. Could have caused an accident, man. There's no need for it. Dangerous driving. I'm pretty sure that's a Vox or Astra. But I haven't got the reg. <clears throat> well, if you see a red Vox or Astra in a second on his reef, you know why. Because he's a fucking dickhead. So yeah, I got out, got out of that job and got into logistics with the aim to become a lorry driver, and now I'm a lorry driver. I absolutely love my job. I do get, um, some of you guys message me on my Facebook, 
and you ask me questions that I'm not actually 100% sure of. So uh, if I don't answer you, it's because I don't know the answer. Some of you guys ask me questions that um, I did know the answer to, but now I don't, because <laughs> like, I had to learn it for when I did my test. And it's the same with passing a car license, like all your theories and, and, your, and your practicals for both cars and HGVs, they're not all relevant to, to the real world. Like, obviously it helps, but it's not all relevant to the real world. You learn to pass your test and then you learn to drive. And you learn to drive for the rest of your life. That's what I've been always been told. You, everyone makes mistakes, you learn from those mistakes. I haven't made a mistake or crashed um, since I hit that house, which was nearly a year ago. Well, 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 I've only been started driving for a year, but that happened almost straight away. It doesn't mean I'm a good driver. I like to think I'm an okay driver. I like to think I'm good at my job. I can reverse, which is necessary in this job. I can reverse quite easily. And I, li I like to think I'm a, I'm a good driver. It doesn't mean I'm the best driver or a perfect driver. I'm still gonna have an accident one day. It's inevitable. The amount of hours that you drive and the amount of fucking miles that you drive, you're gonna have an accident at some point. You're on the road. If I do this for the rest of my life, which I'm more than willing, willing to do, at some point I'm gonna be involved in an accident. It's just, it's gonna happen, do you know what I mean? And you have, to, you have to acknowledge that, it's gonna happen. But hopefully it's not fatal, hopefully it's not my fault. <clears throat> I just need to be a good driver. My advice to, to lorry drivers now or lorry, well, people who's about to get their lorry license. Don't rush, there's no need to rush. Absolutely no need. Your life is on, your life is at risk, do you know what I mean? You're on the road all the time. And at the end of the day, me personally, I've got two kids and a girlfriend I'd like to go home to and see it at the end of each day. So that's my, my top advice really, is just don't rush. Take it easy, do not rush. And that red Vauxhall Astra, I think, needs to take a lesson or two out of my book. <laughs> Fucking what a dickhead he was. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's vlog. Um, hopefully I get my internet sorted out soon. Because the vlog I'm uploading right now has been uploading all day and it's on 25%. And that is unnecessary. It's just, it's just uncalled for. So I need to contact Sky and get it the fuck sorted out. But for now, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you for sharing on Facebook. And um, if you haven't liked me on Facebook yet, go ahead, facebook.com forward slash Luxie in a HGV. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Until next time, drive safe. Bye-bye, guys.